We stand with Ukraine. We will ensure that Ukraine has what it needs to free Kiev from Russian occupation, which has lasted for 10 years. That was not President Biden speaking about the Russia-Ukraine war. It was a deep fake that was circulating back in March. And it could be just one of many more, as we're less than five months away from the presidential election. States, for their part, have been trying to fight those fakes. Sixteen already have laws on the books, with more than a dozen others on track to do the same. But how effective are these laws in combating deep fakes, and how difficult is it to actually identify them? Let's bring back two people who have expertise in both areas. How Lee is a computer scientist and CEO and co-founder of Pins screen. And Heidi Heitkamp, of course, is former North Dakota senator and a CNBC contributor. She's here as well. And it's great to have you both. How? let me just start with you. Um, how widespread are we seeing this issue right now, uh, the appearance and arrival of deepfakes? Yeah, I am definitely uh, there is, uh, you know, people are observing an increase uh, of AI generated media. Um, there's a lot of new capabilities out there, not only deepfakes, but also new generative AI products that allows you to easily generate videos, images out of just text prompts. Right, exactly. So uh, I guess one of the other ways of asking this how would be in, an, in, an, in a moment where we're psychoanalyzing every d video we might get out of President Biden or former President Trump to see what their you know, cognitive capabilities are like and so forth, how would we know if that video had been digitally altered? Well, first of all, uh, it's becoming increasingly difficult. Um, all these new models, architectures, new methods for training these uh, technologies are becoming increasingly uh, performant. So, um, you know, things are really hard to detect nowadays. Um, I think we have to rely on advanced AI detection technologies uh, and to use common sense, right? So uh, it's really hard to just look at artifacts, et cetera. Those things are disappearing slowly. Senator Heitkamp, let's show the first video of President Biden from the G7 summit recently that was making the rounds. Um, and then we can show the, the actual video uh, from President Biden in that same moment. Uh, here's the first one where it appears to show him kind of wandering off, as you can see, uh, generating tons of headlines and reaction to what exactly had happened in this moment. Uh, there's the French uh, or Italian leader trying to bring him back. Then we can also show the video of what that looked like in real time. And here's the actual video where you see from a different angle kind of what was going on, a little bit more context around the situation and so forth. I guess my question would be, you know, where does this fall if we're so concerned about deep fakes and yet just simple editing or or different views of the same kind of material, Senator, can also result in confusion? Oh, absolutely. The technology has been there to use slow motion, to try and use other kinds of technologies other than AI. Um, the thing about that video is it was first not altered, but the, the dimensions was changed by the RNC, was picked up by uh, the New York Post, spread broadly around, I think, at 1.3 million hits. Guess what? They have reputational risk and that shouldn't have happened. You know, when, when you hear the explanation of what President Biden was doing, it makes perfect sense that he was watching something off in the distance, but that makes it look like he was staring at nothing. And so, you know, I call on the DNC, the RNC, and all the legitimate political organizations to stop it. I mean, if you want to play a video, play a video, but make sure that it hasn't been altered. The problem with AI is that it is so intuitive and most people can use it. And so it can really fall in the hands of a lot of nefarious actors, people who don't have reputational risk that we can't fall to the carpet, especially foreign actors who may have a stake in this outcome. And so th this, this, I think it goes back to common sense. You are not gonna have an easy way to figure out whether this is real or not. I always tell people, if somebody wants you to look at this and say, isn't this horrible? You should automatically think, you know, maybe that didn't happen. Maybe I need to find out if that's actually what happened and what the voice has actually said. Yeah, it's difficult how to find, you know, if you're a, someone on your own thinking, okay, well, how do I search for whether this did or didn't happen? Am I searching TikTok? I mean, what do I have to do to kind of, you know, figure that out? I mean, just showing the capabilities that you have where there are videos where you can intake someone's face and then quickly create a digital replica where they can then appear to be saying almost anything. They can speak in different languages. I think you yourself had an example of that. So this technology is, is evolving rapidly. Absolutely. Um, I think um, one of the examples you can see over here is that 
you know, this is our latest technology. You just take a single photo of any person and you can easily bring it back to life. And, you know, this is just showcasing how rapidly this technology is evolving. And even though, you know, most of the use cases, as you can see here, are for virtual reality capabilities, um, you know, people can easily misuse this for other purposes. Yeah, I guess, Senator, it's one thing to create a law saying you can't, you know, create a fake video and, and put it out as the real thing. And I'm sure we're going to see widespread adoption of that we already have. But it's another thing to try to explain what you can and can't do otherwise in terms of editing or, or altering content. Well, absolutely. There's technology now that um, if you take a bunch of pictures, the technology will combine them, find the features that are most favorable, and that's the picture, even though that didn't happen in real time. And these are easily accessible technologies that any person can get access to. And so, you know, if you're looking for regulation, um, forget it. The FEC can barely, uh, you know, figure out how to regulate uh, 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 financial contributions, much less this area, and states really are not going to have the capability. And so this is very dangerous territory that we're in. Amy Klobuchar's bill is probably the closest that has come to penalizing this kind of behavior. But right now, what is the penalty, especially if people are foreign actors and are doing this offshore to, to determine what's going to happen in our election? Yeah. And this is happening in other countries as well.